Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That power in the word of God. The power in the word of God. Sometimes it grew. That was the first, my first year as a priest when I was in Nigeria. After at the mass ended, one of the Sundays, I went out, spent hours before coming back to the house. When I got to the house, I was told that a woman was waiting for me since morning. I didn't remember having an appointment with anybody. I wasn't expecting anybody. I was a bit confused. And then when I got to the woman, she was crying. So I tried to inquire what really happened. Why were you crying? For hours. She said, Father, how do you come to know about me? More confusion. I said, but mother, I'm seeing you for the first time. I don't know anything about you. I've never seen you before. I think I'm seeing you right here for the first time in my life. So she said, all you say that mass was all about me. And that since she attended that mass, in fact, that woman was not from that parish. She was living in another city but visited her home, which wasn't up to the, the parish where I was posted. But coincidentally, she came to Mars on that day. She said, All you said at Mars was my picture. And she was crying and crying and crying. And... So I had to counsel her, talk to her for hours before she went to confession and then went back to her home. The power in the world. There is so much power in God's word. There is so much power in the word of God. Remember, everything came into existence through the power of the word. And God said, let there be and it was. Let there be, and it was, and God saw all he made in the good. The power of God can create, can destroy. The power of God can increase you, it can also decrease you. There is so much power in God's word. The problem is that we have not discovered how powerful the word of God is. Remember, the word of God is God himself. And the word was made flesh and dwelt 
among us. So today, Jesus challenges us. To bear fruit. To bear fruit. And that fruit comes from what? Hearing. Now, the Bible says Jesus told a parable. You know what a parable is? A short story. Told in order to express a reality or certain reality. The, the parable of the sower, he went abroad scattering seed. Those of you who are farmers who sow seed can testify how the farmer sows what seed. The Bible says some of the seed fell on the road, on the paths, and the birds of the air and the path. The Bible says. Those seed and the seed. What is this seed? The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. So, in the heart of man. He said, no, the word of God has been scattered. The word of God has been sown into the world. And this way can fail on the new year. He says, the hearts, those seed that fell on the paths, are seed that fell on or in the hearts of men. But the man sees. Hear yeah, then the parable. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. You can hear, but you don't have understanding. That simply means you are the word of the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said, I will send you another advocate. I will send you a teacher who will teach you everything about God. And on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of the Lord descended upon the apostles. And by extension, we also received the same Spirit. Because when Peter finished speaking or preaching the gospel, on that day of Pentecost, the people said, what shall we do? And Peter said, repent and believe the gospel so that, and be baptized so that you will receive the gift of the Spirit. Not just for you, but your generation yet unborn. Now, this way fell on the path. But they didn't have understanding. That means you can't be coming to church. You can be receiving the communion. You can be baptized. You may be wedded in the church and so forth. But you don't have understanding about the word of God. Church becomes what? A social club. Just to fulfill our righteousness. No, we are Christians. I was born a Catholic. I was baptized. But then you don't even understand what God is saying about you. Now the Bible says the beds ate them up 
And the devil, he says, the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The devourer, the devil, comes and takes away the word that has been sown into your heart because you lack understanding. So you pray for the spirit of understanding. Ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life to teach you the ways of the Lord. The Bible says, and the seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but has no root and lasts only for a while. When some tribulation or persecutions comes because of the word, just mark it because of what the word. We are talking about the power in the word of God. And it says, You receive the message, you accepted it, and then with joy. But immediately, or perhaps sometimes, you encounter some difficulty, some challenges, persecutions, and then you denied God. You encounter persecutions, it may be sickness, it may be rejection, it may be family problems, it may be setback in business. And then, what happens to the world? You don't remember about it again. So when some Tribulation of persecution comes because of the word. He immediately falls away. And this is, you know, uh, the situation or the conditions of so many Christians today. A man without faith. A Christian without faith is nothing. Are you a man of faith? When tribulation comes on my way, when persecutions comes on my way, I remember that I have somebody in Christ Jesus who passed through the road of persecution. He was persecuted, he was rejected, and for the history of Jesus is so pathetic. The owner of the world, but he was born in a manger. Why he was born? The king came after him, and thousands of children were destroyed. The owner of the world became a refugee, and that's why some people say Jesus is an African. Yeah, oh yeah, the black Nazareth. So he went to Africa. Okay, so Africa is a place where you can come and have. Rest and peace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No, he went to Africa. He was living in Africa. And when the king died, the message came to the Arabs. Go back. And he went back. Jesus was sold for what? How many pieces of silver? Yeah? How many? 30. 30 pieces of silver. The owner of the world. He was crucified. He was betrayed. He died an agonizing what? Death. He would have given up. He would have lost hope when persecution comes on your way. When trouble comes on your way. Remember that Jesus passed through that way. So don't give up. Don't give up. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then what the anxiety and the Lord of riches choke the world. The devil said, Everything has been given. To me. If you bow before me, you will burn the nets. 
Jesus was tempted by what? Godly materials. The Bible says that Satan took him to the pinnacle of the temple and showed him the glory of the world. He showed him cars, big houses, fair, conditions. And he said, if only, if only you can worship me, okay, everything will be yours. Anxiety. You have the word of God. You have decided to follow Jesus Christ. But because of fame, because of money, you want to be famous in the Philippines? You can join any club, but do not give glory to the name of the Master. Just simply because of these earthly realities. But I tell you, look, we are passerbys, we are sojourners on this earth. Like the Muslims who say, empty into the world, and empty what? We go. I don't know whether you have seen we are the Muslims very dear day. Nobody you go back naked. So why must you kill yourself? Why must you deny your maker? Why must you deny Jesus in order to be famous? Both of these famousness are what's just temporary in our world. So don't betray your savior. Guide your word when the word comes into your heart and says, But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it. Who indeed bear fruit? Yes, a hundred or sixty or thirty folds. He hears the word of God, he understands it, and then how do you do that? You hear the word, you meditate. You ask the word to dwell in your life. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. In my life. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. In my life. Have your way. Upon you, 
and you will be my witnesses here in Jerusalem, in Judea, and to the ends of the earth. Is your life a life of witnessing? What type of fruit are you carrying? What kind of fruit are you bearing? You cannot bear fruit outside the way of God. That's why Jesus said the way has been sown into your heart. I and mean, how do you do that? How do you allow it to grow? The first reading text us back says, the first reading The first thing says, Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth. Making it that high, and fruitful, giving seed to him who sows, and bread to him who eats. So shall my word be. God said, so shall my word what? Be. That goes forth from my mouth, my word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I set it. Just allow the word of God to take root in your life. I bet you, you will see change in your life. You will see increase in your life. You will see change in every aspect of your life. Whether in your marital life, whether in your relationship, in your marriage, in your family, in your business, in your career, in your spiritual journey with the Lord. Because you know the way to take root in your life, you will experience increase. And I pray for you today, child of God. I pray that you may experience increase in your life. That you may experience increase fruitfulness in your marriage. That you may experience fruitfulness in your career, in your business, in your homes. That you may experience the joy of your salvation and above all that you will be in good standing with the Lord until Jesus comes again through Christ our Lord. Amen.